Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now, it's time to look at the global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And today, we'll be starting with The Punch. The major headline on The Punch, it says, um, TUC, NUC, NLC, rather, splits as DSS won um, labor against planned protests. And the writer here is NLC to protest decision unilaterally, TUC alleges, vows to stay away from demonstration. Another one says Ajero accuses DSS of blackmail. Agency warns labor against plots to destabilize the nation. Um, what, what do you think about this one? <laughs> <laughs> I thought labor unions were, you know, together. I, I think it's a divide and rule thing that is happening right now. Uh, they were talking about this thing a long time ago. Yes. They gave the ultimate... Uh, Ultimatum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a long time ago, TUC didn't say anything. A few days to their actual action, and they're saying that Labour took the decision mm -hmm. unilaterally. Uh, a lot of people will think that something has gone underground yes. for TUC to do what they're trying to do right now. And that is not a very good name. This is like the last straw that will break the camel's back. If this I'm not supporting demonstration, yes. but if this demonstration doesn't happen, there's no strike, nothing, nothing. Labor cannot raise their head anymore and mm -hmm. say we are, we are agitating for this and that and people take them seriously. Even right now, people are not taking them seriously. Yeah. And then they go and say, okay, uh, you took this unilaterally and TUC opts out. It, it doesn't speak well of any of them yes, at all. Yes, because, because TUC now looks like, uh, why do you have to wait this long? You could have said something. Mm -hmm. we, we've been talking about this for the entire time and all of a sudden you are backing out a few days too so it doesn't look well on tuc because i'm wondering what's the rationale behind it behind already I, I saw when i saw this story on the social media a lot of people were saying ah money don't yes, change hands. exchange hands so exactly. that's that's what everybody will be talking about oh and then I, so the, the the role of dss now warning labor party against the strike i understand that nobody wants you know a protest even the security operators do not want a protest but when you're coming to say, um, you know, it's going to destabilize the nation, and according to Ajay, is saying, you know, the DSS, they're blackmailing them. I think DSS is, is it presents as a very lazy institution a, a mm -hmm. lot of times, very lazy. They don't, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Okay, yes. you, you know people who are trying to hijack it and cause mayhem. Mm -hmm. Why can't you stop them? Yes. Why don't you arrest them? Why don't you bring a case against them? Why don't you prevent them from doing what they are intending to do? They always come out with this propaganda and say, we have, due in we have intelligence, intelligence that people like, want to hijack, want to, let me people see want to do these. No intelligence at all. Let it's me propaganda. See the it's propaganda all the time. We know that, yes, sometimes uh, protests are hijacked. That is why police are supposed to go mm -hmm. with these yes. people. And the protest, this is their right, fundamental human rights, to say what they, they are feeling. Mm -hmm. And then you prevent them and say, you have heard that, or you have intelligence that. So if you know these so people, you why, are you yes, exactly. why are you letting them? Yes, exactly. Why are you not through? coming out and making sure that everything, you are, you know, just being there to even give security to the people who are protesting. But if you have intelligence, then that means you can't use your, that it's means you're lazy, telling me that you're redundant. It's a lazy you can't propaganda. Use your intelligence it's a lazy propaganda. Lazy, mm. very lazy. Because if you have this intelligence, you will you know what to do. Yes. You know what to do. You're not telling me that people cannot carry out their rights, and especially in in, in a government that doesn't even believe that protests are for real. They're thinking that it's politically motivated and all that. So mm. what do you get? DSS now being seen as the whipping stick of uh, uh, the administration will now be talking about don't do this. You are putting the the, the nation into chaos and all that. What have they said to the government that is not fulfilling the, 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 the promises made to the labor that yeah. is leading to the protest? Well, Nobody's saying <laughs> anything. So another, another um, headline here says, motorists grown as fuel scarcity hits Lagos. So this morning, when in fact, I've been seeing queues in the gas stations recently. But this morning when I was coming, I couldn't believe the amount of cars that I early. was seeing. Yes. That, and that was about, you know, five something before 6 a.m. There were so many cars queuing up at the fuel stations. And I'm like, wait, is there scarcity again? No, like not with everything that is going on. 
well, well, we really say there's no scarcity. We know that there's a possibility that some people are hoarding and all yes, that. Yes, especially but there, because of the There rates. are a lot of factors that would lead to that. Marketers know that the next time they go to buy, yes. it might be something else. The dollar, we were crying the other time that one week it added like 100 and something. Same day. Now, <laughs> now <laughs> yesterday, hold it on, was 1.9. Hold, hold on. As of that day, that same day, that mm. was on Tuesday, I was surprised to see that the market ended at about 1,008 something. And I'm like, in the morning, it was 1,730. So we were saying there was an addition of 130 naira in one, one week. week in one week. But look at one day, almost a hundred naira addition in one day. So that means by the, e the end of quarter one, by the end of Q1 in Nigeria, what would the dollar be? be? 2,000. Oh, no, 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 2000 is, ah, uh, I'm, I'm so nice, end of the week. I'm, I'm so nice, because yesterday in the morning when we were talking about this, it was 900, 100, 1,900, in the evening it was more than that, I don't know the, some the people are even selling for over 2,000, especially if you want to buy in bulk, you're seeing prices like 3,000, because there is none in circulation, so you can only buy the little that you see. And if you have to buy in bulk, you have to pay about And the same DSS, EFCC and all that, they are going after the people they feel are hoarding the money, Bureau de Change and all mm -hmm. that. The other day we saw uh, that a politician uh, arrested or police arrested a, a maid that they said was working for them, was just employed three days later. She stole $58,000. And I was asking myself, how did that man have $58,000 at in the home? First place. And someone who was um, uh, employed three days will have access to $58,000. So in my mind, it was like, more yes, it was just, had. that was the only one that was just littered Lying all around. around. Yes, the real one might still be in that house. How, how are these people going scot-free? And mm -hmm. then you're going to the people who are using these as a livelihood. There are bureau de change everywhere in the world it's just that the regulation is different yeah uh -huh. but in nigeria it's not the same thing so why not look about look at the regulation do what you need to do and all that you and i don't have access to mint naira for instance no. but you go to parties there are people yes. who have this yes. mint naira. so where are they getting them from? from you go to a pos now you find pos very close to atm machines like where we are working yes. right now it, there's a POS close to ATM machine. You won't find cash in the, in the ATM, ATM, but you'll find, you'll it, find it with the POS, POS operators. How, what, is, what is going on? Yeah. So we're sabotaging ourselves and all that. DSS, everything. The approach is not to arrest people. Think of why these people are doing this thing and arrest that thing. Trucks of food will be arrested. You are not asking why they are doing this. You're not asking where that person will get the next meal or yeah. what he has invested. You arrest them and you distribute the audio audio food to mm. people anyways there's another headline that might just you know give succor to people it says senate rejects electricity tariff hike probes two trillion naira subsidy well we thank god for small that's what, messes. That's what I said, thank god for small <laughs> messes but I, I think it is not it's not going to work mm. because when the the discos or whoever is in charge say we, are, we want to up the tariff uh, there's always a cry. The federal government will say, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, but you find out that the unit measure has gone up mm. without anybody just knowing. It's the same thing with uh, the uh, service providers. You, you know, you have your, all these service providers, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they will tell you that we want to increase our prices. There will be outcry that you will not hear. Mm. And then the next thing you find out when that they, 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 10 gigabyte that you were using for just, two weeks. It's like they, they in use three a days, straw. Yes. And it, just Not suck one it out. straw, like three. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just suck it out from you. So, I, I mean, they are going to say it in principle, but these people will still increase it. Mm. Trust me. So, if your house was loading 100,000 a, a month, you'll find that that, that 100,000 will be mm. finishing on the 15th. Hmm. Um, with everything that's happening right now, I don't know if what I don't where is Nigeria going to? Where are we headed? I want to know. We're headed to uh, so, so, so a revolution. Some people will tell you that please I want to come down from this bus because it's it's crazy. We say it on this show all the time that it is we are going somewhere that we may not be able to to control. 
there will be a revolution but let it be the revolution for something better yeah. not a revolution where people will be angry and hungry. people are protesting in lagos in oyo in niger in kaduna everywhere this is just because they have not come together because yeah. there might be a time when everybody will just go on the streets and we won't be happy about it all right let's move over to the next paper quickly um so well the headline here we're looking at the guardian now and the major headline says customs five trillion naira target threatens trade heightens price crisis so we're still talking about the same thing that's happening in nigeria yeah, well, what do you expect when customs um they, they move their uh, custom duties had different prices in the course of two, um, one week or so, or is it two days? They mm -hmm. moved it 12 times, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think they even increased their prices twice in one day or twice in four yes, days, something like that. In two like days, that. they had like 12 times that it was increased mm -hmm. and all that. So how do you do business? How do you plan for tomorrow? So I buy my goods today and I'm spending $100 and there is no assurance that the next time it's going to be even 120 so I'll be selling those goods, hoping that if it is going to be $200, I can still meet up. Otherwise, the business will fold up. So how are we going to blame the people who are trying to do what they're trying to do? Mm. And you're calling people who are keeping things uh, as hoarders, people who are hoarding the things. You did not talk about the, the people who hoarded palliatives or anything else. You're talking about farmers and traders that are doing what they think is best for them so that their businesses can stay afloat. Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> me, I'm tired. Once you give a I'm target tired. to somebody, that's the problem. People now buy, don't buy cars in Nigeria, you know. They go to Benin Republic, yes. buy the cars, the, drive them back yeah. into Nigeria. And that's why you're seeing, you know, smuggling happening a lot because a lot of people cannot even afford the, the, the amount that customs puts. These cars... I mean, and I'm, I'm not here to promote smuggling, but I'm just saying because we, we, you have to think of the root cause of the matter. You have to think of the why. Why are people doing this? But when, when the country seems so hard, when the economy um, has a dwindling downturn, sometimes people are pushed to the wall. I know that there are people who are criminals, yes. Yes. We, we are, agree. But if there are 100 people doing smuggling now, there's a possibility at least 40 went into it because of other reasons that yeah. were not motivated by just being a criminal mm -hmm. mind so if you can address that that means it's 40 percent less of the problems you have at our borders now you want to buy a car a car that should cost you like three million naira hmm. you come to nigeria you find out that with the ex uh, excise duties everything that you need to pay that car is costing you like seven million naira you that go to Kotunu, you do whatever you need to do like 10, and drive years. back all you need to do is uh, is this a good thing to say bribe a little bit of the cost the same customs and then pass with your car it's not good it's not yeah. telling uh, well of our country nigeria and business uh, will keep folding and dwindling like you're saying Anyways, another headline here says Tinubu give governors 30 billion naira each to address food shortage. Where is the 30 billion naira? Where is the food? Because, I mean, prices, have you gone to the market lately? Prices are ridiculous. No. In fact, I, I had um, an appointment with my new technician yesterday and he was just telling me how much the cost of foil paper. Foil paper is like the most useless thing in the world, really. Like you only just use it to wrap food and that's it. And once you use it, that's you're it. not using it again. Foil paper that used to be about two, three thousand now costs twelve thousand naira. Twelve mm -hmm. for one of the most useless things in the world that seemed essential as well, because when you want to preserve your food in the fridge and all of that. But that's how much it is. From three to twelve. To twelve, 000. like things are crazy. So if you're saying that you know thirty billion naira was allocated to you know each governor for food short to you know just to ensure that there's food supply and all of that, where is the thirty billion for each state? And why are we still seeing a shortage in food supply? They know. They know that this money is not going to be used for the people. Now, when you give people money, like the World Bank will give you money, or let's say, yes, uh, for SDGs or whatever, 
They give you a template. They give you things to achieve. They give you a target. This is what you are going to put this into and all that. Or the person collecting this money brings a proposal that this is X, Y, Z I'm going to do. But people protested a few days and then you call the governors for a meeting. Uh, the inflation and the food crisis is getting out of hand. Take 30 billion to do what with it? Now, governors will come and say, like I saw uh, uh, the other uh, governor now distributing, uh, was it a governor, distributing 10 kg bags of rice. And they were like, uh, is it 5,000 or so in a state? How many people are going to get it? How many days are they going to eat it? Let's mm -hmm. say family of three. That is mother, father and one child, uh, which is very rare yes, in Nigeria. Yes. So family of three. 10 kg of rice, how many days will they eat that 10 kg of rice? It's Where will the seasoning come from? Where will the oil yes. come from? So Other things to cook with. And you, you're just giving them 30 billion without giving them a template of things that they need to achieve. Yeah. I'm not sure that template is there because nobody has said it. All we hear is that governors and the president, they had a meeting to discuss what? Planting okay. season has started. This is rain, raining right mm -hmm. now. Planting season has started. What are you doing? Definitely to make sure that in the next three months, because there are crops that can mature in the next three two months, months three yeah. months, you have not done anything about it. And then you're just giving 30 billion. They will finish it. <laughs> Me, I feel like it was just money that exchanged hands. That was they will it. finish it, that is all. And then do some palliatives, buy some spaghetti and give uh, to some people. My noodles. And that is all, noodles. Mm. And that's the and end. Maybe, maybe they will add small gari. And then they will, have, gari. they will have receipts for all those things. That is the ridiculous part They'll have of receipts. They will have one derica of gari, uh, one noodle, one this, put it in a small bag and then give. Like the other... It's not that, I don't even think it's everyone in the community that would even get that. It's, it's not about everyone. If a politician will go to a community to campaign, and he gives one loaf of bread to an entire uh, two-story building, like everybody. No. You didn't see that on social media. No. They used it. They, the boys now used it and began to play like football. No. Like it's insulting for a yes. person of that standing to bring bread, one loaf of bread for a full compound. Dude, that's ridiculous. That's an insult. Even a, even a family, can you really? And it was still know, voted in. Wow, interesting. It was still. At okay. least it was still voted in. Let me quote it because <laughs> that's what we know. Anyways, I mean, we just hope that at least food, because that's the basic. You, you have to eat even before you can put clothes on your back. You have to eat before you can even think of shelter. Food is what sustains you. And so if there's like, you know, a shortage of food supply in Nigeria, that is quite alarming because that's like the first thing that needs to be sorted out as soon as possible. So I hope that the government, you know, is doing something about this. It seems like they're clueless, but we just hope that miraculously... Let them ask some of us who are farmers. We'll tell them what to do. <laughs> All right, um, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. So please stay with us.